Let's give our confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Let's greet the person beside us and also our overseas believers. You are the fragrance of Christ. Our senior pastor is currently attending the North America Evangelism Retreat and is also attending ministries in Canada. Please continuously pray for our pastor's health and ministry. Reverend Sung Soo Kim, who will be giving us the message today, is he is uh, currently the honorable. Uh, he is currently taking upon the role of an honor honorable pastor at his church, and he's also been a professor of theology as well. Today, his message is entitled "The Christian Values." Let us briefly pray. Father God, who is alive and working, just as there are rain showers in a deserted land, may the word of God and God's grace sh be showered upon all the believers of Yewon Church here today. May the working of healing take place through the power of God may the gospel be shared to all two through seven nations and 5,000 people groups and may all the believers here be used as workers in that very work may you use us as your instruments and Father may you pour down abundant answers upon our senior pastor wherever he goes we pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. It's nice to meet you again. I stood here the first week of June, and I went back home, and then the next day, senior pastor called me. So he, he was speaking so fast. He was, he said, oh, you know, the pastors and I mean, the elders and the senior deacon says they received grace. And then he said, oh, the conclusion of what he, the, his phone call was about was that he asked me to give him, give a message one more time. And I said, okay, I'll prepare with prayer. And so this time I didn't even predict the fact that I would be standing here again. But nevertheless, I am thankful to our Reverend Jo Chang for inviting this unworthy servant again, and I give glory to the Triune God. Before we go into the word of Matthew 13, you all know the way of salvation, right? And I actually wanted to write that on the board but you already know this very well so why don't you imagine that there is a chalkboard before you in front of you and imagine the god who created the universe according to his image created mankind mankind originally enjoys happiness when they are with god but because of the serpent the devil they Mankind disobeyed God and was separate from God, who is the source of happiness. As a result, just as the word says, we are the children of the devil, we became children of the devil. And children of the devil, they live a miserable life their entire life and, and in the end go to heaven and go to hell. But God sent us a savior and he died on the cross and he resurrected and completed the position of the Christ. He completed the cross. And Christ is the true, the true king, the true prophet, the true priest. And Christ, who is a true king, destroyed the devil. And Christ, who is the true priest, solved all our sin problems. And the true prophet, Christ, opened up the way for us to meet God. And all you need to do is accept Him in your heart. And when you accept Christ, you become a child of God. 
And a child of God lives a happy life their entire life and they enter heaven. And so, I bless you in the name of the Lord that you may accept Christ as the master of your life. So we will briefly pray of acceptance prayer. Father God, follow after me. I am a sinner. I was deceived by the devil. Uh, and I went astray from God. At this time, I opened my heart. I believe that you destroyed the devil and forgave all my sins and opened the way to meet God. I accept Jesus Christ as the master into my heart. At this time, come into my heart through the Holy Spirit and make me a child of God and allow me to enjoy true happiness. May the Spirit of Truth guide my life and work upon my life. I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And so last week I was meeting with some missionaries and I, I also gave this message again there. And I also was visiting a real estate company and I you get, shared the gospel to the owner of the real estate company. And I also went to a barber shop and a salon and I didn't have a, an opportunity to give the gospel. But last week I had time so I shared the gospel with the head of the salon. Matthew 13 is commonly referred to as the chapter of parables of the kingdom of heaven and it contains seven parables about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom or heaven mentioned here refers to the, the eternal heaven that we will go to but also at the same time it mentions, it refers to the tr to the heaven that, because when we talk about heaven, there is a heaven of afterlife and the heaven concerning the church and the heaven concerning the present. However, the church, the kingdom here refers to the church as the present kingdom of heaven. And the parable of the sower in Matthew 13 discusses the hearts that accepts the gospel and also the parable of the weeds talk about the weeds or that could also be planted in the hearts of believers. And then the parables of the mustard seed and yeast indicate the rapid growth and development of the church. And then verse 44 and onwards the from the passage that we read today is about the parables of the hidden treasure and pearl which discuss the joy and values of those who possess the kingdom and lastly the parable of the net explains the final judgment of the church because the parable of the net they discern fish that they want to keep and the fish that they get rid of And today, through the hidden treasure and the pearl parables, we will develop deeper and delve deeper into the issue of Christian values. When you look at the Aesop's fable, the ant and the grasshopper, I'm sure you all know this very well. The ant was faithful and hardworking, and it had gathered up all the food it would need for the winter, so that even though it's cold in the winter, they could live a comfortable life but the grasshopper was lazy and would only sing during the summer and in the winter it, the grasshopper went to the ants and asked for food and so that's the first version of the the grasshopper and the ant and then, but there's a second version the grasshopper worked so hard that he got back pains and so then he there he had to pay a lot of medical the ants, they worked so hard that they had back pain, so they had to go to the doctor and they had to pay many medical bills. But 
the grasshopper because the grasshopper was so good at singing he became famous and started to make a lot of money through by becoming a singer that's the second version of the ant and the grasshopper but there's a version third version the ant accepted the pastor and was healed because they received the prayer of the pastor but the grasshopper with the money that the he made he went on going to do drugs and started drinking and then his lungs all became destroyed and that's the, the end of his career what this talks about is it talks about our traditional values and shows that because of those values we may form other values of our life and so what is important apostle paul summarizes in romans if you look at Romans 1, 18 to 23, it said, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse for although they know God they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him but their thinking became futile and their few foolish hearts were darkened although they claimed to be wise they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles the parable of the hidden treasure and the pearl it may seem similar but there are also similarities and so first if we were to look at the differences is that one the field where the treasure was hidden were different and but both parables also sold all possessions to buy the treasure or pearl which was the commonality why did they do that because treasure is there and one person buys one pearl to have sold all their possessions means that there was immense value in what they had found then what do these treasure and the pearl which is of such high value represent literary techniques like parables and fables clarify the truths or lesson they aim to convey due to their symbolic nature so in Greek the word parable is parabole it's a combination of two words para means nearby and then pore means to see and so to put them to together it's parabole so a parable when we say the kingdom of heaven although we long for the kingdom of heaven are you li really living a life of heaven if i ask you this it's not easy to answer this why because the kingdom of heaven is not of it's not the real world nor is it a virtual world it is real but it's something that cannot be realistically that we really cannot see but it is also something that surely does exist and therefore Jesus used parables to help us understand the kingdom of heaven so these two parables emphasize the fact that they discovered these treasure but the way that they explain how the discovery happened is different slightly 
It said, a man happens to find a treasure hidden in a field. What this means is that one man came across, by chance, treasure that was hidden in a field. But the story of the discovery of the pearls is different. It says a man is looking for fine pearls. The man found this. And so it may seem like one individual found treasures by luck while the other actively searched for the pearl. And so I knew this person who used to work in a prison, uh, in a jail, and then start, uh, accepted Jesus Christ and started to go to church. And so he had two children. One and she, he named one child named left and right in Korean and said two daughters and why did you name your name left and right and he said one was named one was born out of chance and one was born out of out, out of intention and naturally and then he named his son John and I said why did you name your son John and he said oh because I by the time I went to I came to church, that's when we had the third child, and that's why I named him John. There is no such thing as chance when it comes to this world. Even if it may seem coincidental, in reality, it is within God's absolute sovereignty and God's necessity that has functioned. And when we give this kind of parables, some people say, When we, it says field, we're not talking about the comp competing field. We're talking about just a field of land. And although this man found treasure, some people argue, oh, if he found treasure coincidentally, shouldn't, you, shouldn't he have gone and looked for the owner of the treasure? No, when it comes to parables, it doesn't have to be so complex. It just needs to be simple. And then the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of God. Why is the heaven heaven? Because it is heaven because it is a kingdom where God reigns. And so more specifically speaking, it is the domain where the go Father God's rule is realized. But one thing we must know is that the kingdom where our Father is present, of the nation where its Father reigns, is success. They are the nations that are successful. When we give our Lord's Prayer, what do we say? We said, Our Father in heaven, I believe in God the Father Almighty. Right? That's what we say during the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. We call on our God the Father. We call on our Father. And so there's no one who calls God a random stranger. Who, who should you call God? You call him Father. What should you call him? It is Father. Long ago, there was a female deaconess who had a son who did not go to church, so she always prayed. And so one time, 
it was a time where all the believers came together and pray. And this husband had never come to church, and so and the husband didn't know what to pray and how to pray, and so he started to pray. And so the, he saw his wife, and his wife was saying, Father God, Father God. And so he, start, he didn't know how to pray, so he said, I believe in my father-in-law. But you shouldn't believe in your father-in-law. And so there are many good men out there, but our Father God is not just a stra strange man, a random man. But if you look at, if you look at the second, if you look at Second Corinthians, it said, "It is only by the grace of God that we're able to call our Father." And in Romans 8, 14, 18, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in His sufferings in order that we may also share in His glory, I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Why? Because we are children of God. My God, my God, my Father God, thank you. Thank you, infinite thanks to you. Father, Father, thank you for the grace you have bestowed upon me. Thank you. Thank you. Glory be to you, Father God. Dear believers, I bless you in the name of the Lord to give glory to God the Father with the consciousness of being God's children and with the right and correct Christian values. Then what is my pearls and my treasure? What is the treasure and pearl worth, worth selling all my possessions for? It's just one thing. It is Jesus Christ. The merchant searching for fine pearls found only one of such great value that he sold everything he had to buy it. And because of that one valuable pearl that he found, when he finds one that is unusually fine, it said, when the, the, at first he only found one thing, and it was unusually fine, something that was incomparable with the other things something that was invaluable because it, of its immense value. And that's what he discovered. Anyone who discovers the unique value of Jesus Christ, the Savior presented by God as the only way of human salvation, will give up all the possessions to acquire him. And Apostle Paul was the representative being of this. But how does Paul confess? Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 to 12. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is 
through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of His resurrection and participation in His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death, and so somehow attaining to the res resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all of this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Isn't this tremendous? Isn't this wonderful? Who is Jesus to you? Such a change in values must occur today. Only then can you make a complete confession of faith before Jesus. An elderly woman went to church at her daughter-in-law's confirmation class. In the baptism preparation class, the daughter-in-law advised her. And she said, mother-in-law, when the pastor asks whose sin Jesus died for, because the pastor will ask you, who did Jesus die on the cross for? Then answer, for my sin. And she said, okay. And so she went to church. And the pastor asked her during the Q&A, who did Jesus Christ die for? And then the mother-in-law said, oh, for the sins of my daughter-in-law. Your confession of faith must be clear. And the value of your faith must be clear. Jesus Christ, who is the unique solution to our life and the way He is our highest and only value. We lived a life that was once centered on ourselves, on materials, and on worldly success, but now it has changed to a God-centered, word-centered, and church-centered life. That types of transformation must take place inside your life and inside your fields. When I was young and when I I went to when I when I was young I used to go to church but I went to church twice a year on Easter and on Christmas On Easter I received eggs as gifts and on Christmas I received pumpkin rice cakes And when I used to live in the country that those snacks were so good and so but I used to go to church just to receive those snacks and I didn't go back and so in my head I thought church is a place where they give you good food and it's a place where good people nice people are are present and I think that still even though I was so young it's still, that the same thought is still embedded in my head and so the church has to keep giving. No one is saying amen. Yeah, when church continuously gives, our senior pastor, he continuously gives. And I've received a lot of that. I'm not just saying this. Of course, there may be cultures of where people serve each other and gift each other. But when I look at senior pastor, he always wants to give us something. Whatever mission field, whenever he goes, he, he doesn't only bring the gospel. But with that, if you go to the field, there are many people in that country when you go to on a mission trip. And he wants to give them anything and so he gives and gives and because of that the hearts of those people open and they receive the gospel 
Luke 6.38 says, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shake it together, and running over will be poured into your lap. Just as God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, He gave it to us. Today, amongst you, whatever the reason may have been for you to come to church, but an individual who has come to church and one who has not has a grand difference. Even today, among you, perhaps there's someone who, who's come to church for the first time. Congratulations. I sincerely congratulate you. You've done well to come here. And so you may think that I came here by coincidence, but no. Inside God's plan and intervention and provision, God has called me here, and I stand before you today. That's how you must believe it. I heard that Yewon Church is currently unfolding the start 10,000 2025. If God is with you, this can take place. May you have faith as you pray. As a pastor who relays Jesus Christ, it is my great treasure and pearl to be able to live as a pastor by God's grace, I have dedicated 45 years as a pastor, and now I am a retired pastor. I began attending church naturally after enrolling in a mission school in Seoul. And when I was in middle school, and while in the preparatory course for seminary before my military service, I experienced a profound grace during a teacher's training session at Namdaemun Church, organized by the National Child Evangelism Fellowship, which is based on John 20. One, feed my lambs. Back then, there was many prayer centers and prayer events. And after seeking various prayer centers and seeking grace, after my discharge in the military, I started working as an assistant pastor in a church in Yosu, introduced by a pastor friend of my older brother. In 1979, the, uh, the Typhoon Carmen destroyed the church and parsonage of the church building that I was in charge of. And it was a major trial in my ministry. And inside difficulty, I went back to Dolsan, serving there for eight years. while balancing my studies and my ministry. In the fall of 1983, before the ordination ceremony at the regular presbytery meeting of the Yosu Presbytery, I undertook a 40-day fast as at the prayer center in Guangzhou. And the church was reviving. It wasn't like I had any power. But our church members started to increase. And there were many works that were taking place in the layman, upon the layman's as well. And I, I realized, and at that time, there were many individuals who were demon-possessed, and I realized Whenever we'd pray, it would be cast out, but then once we come back, it would be back where it is. Where it is, And so I, I felt like there was no other way. And so I prayed to God, God, I want to receive some power because I want to cast out these demons. And so I went to the Munsan prayer hall to pray for this, but that's when my life was overturned. And I realized I needed power, but I believed 
that the 40 day fast would indulge me with power, but instead of power, I was just so hungry and I would just see visions of food during prayer. And so, see, smelling food, I would linger near the dining halls while I was fasting. And there was no other special power that came to me, but there was something I learned from that. During my 40 day, 40 days in the prayer center, there were individuals and speakers who gave deeply moving sermons. I don't know if you're familiar with the Goshin denomination, but there was a pastor named Kim Do Lee. And one day he came as a speaker. And while giving him, giving his lecture, I was deeply, deeply moved and received a lot of grace. And he kept praying, calling out to God and praying. But when he prayed, I, I kept feeling I, I prep my prayer as I was I continued to pray my prayer shifted from Lord give me to Lord take me and I, I started to realize that oh it's not that I should have been asking God to give me something but I should have been praying that I would devote my life to God And that changed my perspective of prayer. In December 2021, I underwent lung cancer surgery. And then I had bladder cancer and a kidney balloon procedure. And so going through various procedures, I started to become a little bit discouraged. And then one day I habitually prayed. I said, God, I have no great desire to live long, but if permitted, I only wish to live up to 100 years old. Why are you laughing? Reverend Chung said that he'll live until 120 years old. Have you seen him do push-ups? I think he'll be able to live 120 years. And so for me, my prayer topic was to live for 100 years, but the situation was not good. There were various examinations before the surgery, And then, however, after pre my pre-surgery tests and results were not very good, and it led to a difficult recovery even after the surgery. And so because of the situation that I was in and I wasn't recovering well, I thought that perhaps this was going to be the end of my life or the end was cut nearing. And so when facing life and death, I felt compelled to prepare my heart and emotions overwhelmed me. And even though I saw many people, others die, and I've led many funerals, when it came to my own death, I felt like I needed to write a will. And while trying to write my will, I realized there was nothing much to say. But then I still wrote it anyway. On an A4 paper, I typed it up. And when I saw it, the conclusion of it was, thank you for being with me. And I'm sorry. And live a good life. And I'm not just talking about the physical life, but the spiritual life as well. You need to live a good life. There was a stingy rich man. He did not know how to share his wealth with others, but all he thought about was his own savings. But one day this man passed away and his son asked a local solar s scholar to write his to write the words that would be put on his tombstone. 
And after asking about the man's life, the scholar wrote, the the father the the scholar asked his son how did you live how did your father live his life and so after hearing his explanation the scholar wrote yu yu hua hua which translates to lived like a willow died like a flower and putting that on the tombstone later on Someone asked, you wrote Yu Yu Hua Hua, and he said, he lived like a willow. He lived a good life in the world, but he simply withered like a flower and passed away. When I reflect on my life, one, there are two things that I'm most proud of. And the first is marrying my wife and forming a family with her. You don't really say amen to this. The reason I say this is because there are some people who only hear and does, don't put things to practice. And second, what I'm proud of is that while doing my pastoral journey, when I declared that Tarapang is not a heresy publicly, I am very, very proud of that, and I have great pride in doing so. Tarapang is not heretical. What is the core of the accusations calling Tarapang a a heresy is that they say that that Pat Reverend New talks about the authority to be able to bind and cast out demons. I also studied theology and I also did lectures on heresies and cults. But when assessing the Starbucks movement, when to be able to say that angels are mobilized when evangelists work, they're not, when we pray for that, we don't pray to humans for that, but we pray to God. If you look at the Bible, angels do work. Why do you try to negate what the Bible says? We have been given the authority to cast out demons, to bind demons and evil spirits in the name of Jesus Christ, with the authority that Jesus Christ has given to us. It's written in the Bible. And these are the contents that have already been organized. And later on, later on, Reverend Yu also clarified what he meant when he said, but his intention was that was that we when he when he claim when he made claims about the authority that has been given to us he had clear intentions but people took that and misunderstood it and accused the tarbang of a heresy but you must remember that even or the early church and the apostle Paul was also accused as heretics at that time. But you must have a true identity and values in faith. And so you must not be hesitant. You must not be discouraged in the faith that you are holding on to. And 
And as I addressed the last time, there are various kinds of churches. The churches on this earth and church in heaven and the triumphant church and the church that is in battle. But right now we attend a church on, in this earth and there might be problems inside the unity and small trivial matters here and there. But that's not what we must focus on. What we must focus on is whether we are doing the gospel movement as we hold on to the correct gospel and whether we acknowledge the true value of the gospel. It is not the people or the trivial matters that we must focus on. The reason I talked about my own experiences in my background is because for me, Christ is the greatest value in my life. And that's why even when I went into the 40 day fasting, I was staking my life and I said, I prayed with the heart that said, God, if my, if you desire to take my life, then you should take my life. But I desire to fully entrust everything to you. And that is why. That's how I, I express my confession of faith that consider Christ as the highest value in my life. Martin Luther already said, all Christians carry out the priestly rule And the theologian Calvin also expressed it in a different way, whether it's not just the pastors or the assistant pastors that are given a role of the clergy or religious roles, but each and every one of us are given this priestly role as we live out our faith. And that's why when you look at figures in the Bible, they are individuals who carried out the works of God even if they were not appointed as clergy or as ministers. And that's why for us, it is our treasure and our pearl to be able to proclaim of the way of the cross. This is not optional, but this is essential. It's mandatory. I committed myself to evangelism missions throughout my ministries. When I was in Busan, I remember I conducted street evangelism with Choyang Church's expanded Sunday school teachers. And then in the field of doing my pastoral ministry, and where I, I remember I would continue personal evangelism with young people at Sake Station Plaza every Saturday and deliver five minute messages through a loudspeaker. And I also engage in various evangelism and Bible study programs throughout my ministries and throughout my pastoral ministry. There were various types of events and movements that I participated in. And in 1995, we held a grand evangelism festival inviting 3,000 people to hear the gospel. And we started at 3 a.m. At I remember at three at we started at 5 a.m. and 
for the early morning prayer and through and we would also hear messages almost every single day and at that time my church had about 200 young adults and overall we had about 350 350 believers but then we held a grand evangelism festival and we had invited 3,153 people to hear the gospel and last year an article titled Pastor Kim Sung Soo's mission strategy was published in a magazine that is often viewed by pastors called Pastoral Ministry Monthly. And so, when I think about, was this the best evangelism strategy? I'm not sure. I just realized I went over time with my sermon. I will be concluding my message. It, there's a quote by William Booth that said, Some people's ambition is art, fame, gold. But my ambition is souls. Pastor Chung quoted this in his book, the liberation, the declaration of liberation. I think this might be the confession of Reverend Chang himself. Today, may you discover what the hidden treasure that you are looking for is. May you discover what your pearl is. Did you sell all your possessions for that? Only Jesus Christ is the answer and testifying that Jesus is the Christ and evangelizing the gospel is the answer. I bless in the name of the Lord that this grace may be bestowed upon all of Yewon Church believers. Father God, we thank you. May we know Jesus Christ as the greatest value in our soul. And may we, for the sake of testifying of the kingdom of God devote our lives and be used for that work we pray this in Jesus Christ's name amen <laughs>